Hey guys, uh, sorry I'm a few minutes late, just having a hard time here uh, setting all the cameras. Still don't know why I can't get the palette cam to work. Uh, so, I don't know. I'll just have um, the palette. I'm going to bring it to the camera above in a minute. So, we're going to get started. And today... As I said, uh, let me switch to the other camera. Just give me one second so you guys can see the overhead uh, cam. I believe. Oh, there you go. All right. So I don't know why this camera doesn't want to work. Um, just going to not put it there. But here it is today's painting so again um let me just move a little bit here make myself more comfortable <laughs> so today we are gonna start with the michael's watercolor kits so if you are here saturday when i gave an introduction to what we're going to be doing I got those kits from Michaels and it's a watercolor kit and it comes in different types. I think there's like 10 or 12 of different themes, uh, birds like you see here, sea life, flowers, natural elements, wildlife, woodlands, you name it. There is a bunch of different uh, themes for anything that you like. And the kit comes with the pre-printed designs so there's four of them here one for each of those uh, pictures that you see here in the front it also comes with a small palette and the colors are pretty good i tested out i created a swatch not sure what i put it but i'm gonna try and find it so i can show it to you and also a brush now i'm gonna be honest i got some extra brushes just because i want some bigger ones especially for something like we're going to be painting today which for today i decided to go with the beluga whale and her baby so there's very large areas here and rather than try and paint with a small brush that it came with uh, don't ever do that. Don't put the little thing back. I got some Zen brushes also from Michaels. This, these are actually two different sets. And uh, I will put links to it in the comments if you are interested in getting any of it. I'm not affiliated with Michaels. I just am a shop, a Michaels shopaholic. <laughs> I really love my goals. I get stuff from there, I would say, probably once a week, if not more. And uh, when I saw this watercolor kits, I thought they were fun and really cute, the, the subject. And I thought, you know what? The one thing they don't have, though, is a lot of instructions. So when you look here in the back, it gives you some basic instructions. Test the color of your paint on scrap piece of paper. Work from light colors first to darkest. Uh, for better control over details, allow paint to completely dry. A wet brush apply to dry paper loss for more control. Applying paint to wet papers produce fluid results. Use less pigment and more water for lighter shades. More pigment for darker shades. And use two containers of water while you're painting. Uh, those are very good. Uh, advice, <laughs> very good instructions, but they don't really tell you exactly how to paint the subject. My one complaint about it is that the pictures are too small. So I really wish that they had put bigger pictures here in the back or just an insert with a bigger picture so we can see better. And especially if you're a beginner, it's going to be kind of hard because based on all those instructions here it's not going to be super easy to follow especially because the pictures are so small so i figure 
why not just go live every day for a month make a commitment to my uh audience and just show you how i would approach those subjects and give you some tips in the meantime so every day i will post in the morning on my facebook page as well as on the facebook group it starts o'clock somewhere if you're a member the time that i'm gonna go live on that day because i know that i have my audience spread throughout the country so i want to make sure that people on the west coast also have a chance to watch it at a decent time not like seven o'clock in the morning <laughs> so i will try to kind of balance between morning and afternoon so every day if you have your settings uh to be notified when i post on my page or on the group you will know exactly what time i will go live on that day so without further ado i'm going to get the whale and what i did here because i am going to paint that background with lots of water I decided to tape it to a board and this here is just the back of a watercolor pad. So I saved it and I have some washi tape here. Just tape it around that way I can keep the paper nice and um, steady here so it doesn't buckle too much. I mean it will warp a little bit because we are going to work with quite a bit of water for this for the background but at least having the paper tape to the board it's going to keep things from going too wild. I do have uh, a heat gun or it can be a blow dryer whatever to speed up drying times and even though it doesn't say anything about creating special effects in the background. I will use either salt or, let me get it from here, alcohol, just regular rubbing alcohol to create some special effects um, on the background. So I'm going to open the palette. And I don't know, unfortunately, what I did with the swatch that I created the other day um, when I was showing just an introduction of what I was going to do for this month regarding those kits. So the very first thing that I want to do is just create a swatch real quickly so we know what the colors are and it will make it much easier to match more or less to what the project says so let me move the painting and i will get my brush and one thing that you want to do is to activate your colors so it's easier to remove the pigment so i'm just going to spray all of them with a little bit of water and that is gonna make it easier to pick up the pigment. So here's my brush and I'm gonna try to keep the swatch in the same order that is here so it's easy for me to see what color. Okay, so that's a nice earth color. It looks very similar to burnt sienna. The next one, let's see. Oh, very lovely color. It's almost like a, a thalo turquoise. Beautiful. I love it. Next one looks like olive green here on the palette, but let's see what we get. Yeah, it's kind of a, an olive green. Actually, very similar to uh, green gold. So... It's a little bit less yellow than green gold, but very similar to green gold. This here looks like cerulean blue. Yep. Lovely, lovely color. The next one looks like orange. You can, you can uh, sometimes tell with the lighter colors what they are. 
from the palette, but sometimes you can. So it's always good to do a swatch. I'm not going to swatch the white because it's no point. Uh, this one here looks like burnt umber. And sure enough, it is. This looks like ultramarine blue. I'm thinking, no, no. It's more like uh, dioxazine purple. Yep. So this looks like... Hmm, interesting. So this one looks like phthalo green, but more like a phthalo turquoise. Yeah, I stand corrected. Now that this here dried a little bit more, and let me fix this bloom. This here, it's more of a phthalo blue, and here is more of a phthalo turquoise. Pretty color. This next one here, I would assume is cobalt. Yeah, it looks like cobalt blue. So nice, some granulation there. This looks like a warm red of some kind. Yeah, very similar to Scarlet Lake. And this looks like lemon yellow. Okay, so the last roll of colors here, this looks like it's ivory black. Yep, sure enough. Next one appears to be yellow ochre or even Naples yellow. Let's see. No, no, no. It's more of a yellow ochre. Yeah. The next one. This is stalo green. So yeah, we're we we got like a some phthalo, some different phthalo. So we have the phthalo blue here, the phthalo turquoise, and the phthalo green. Then I'm hoping this is ultramarine. Mm, not really. This looks like another iteration of phthalo blue. So, yeah, no ultramarine. This here, they might have tried to make this be ultramarine, but this is much closer to cobalt blue than real ultramarine. And here we have a cooler red, but let's see. This is the mass tone. Let's see the undertone. Yeah, it's very, yeah, it's more towards the violet. So this is what they're giving us for a cool red. And then here is a cooler, I mean, sorry, a warmer yellow than we had before. So here we go. Those are our colors. So we have 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 17 colors plus the white. All right. And let me put this palette on the side. And I would love if, uh, if there's anyone watching, if you could post a comment just to let me know that the image is good, it's clear. Let me turn this camera a little bit like this. And I'm also going to post a comment and tell me if you can read my comment. So there's anyone there i would really appreciate also because i'm broadcasting simultaneously to youtube to the page and also on periscope i would love i think is also going in the group is only telling me uh it's art o'clock somewhere and facebook so i don't know if it's in the page or in the group the private group so if there's anyone out there reading uh uh, or I mean, sorry, watching this, if you could help me out and let me know that the image is clear um, because I'm paying the premium services uh, for getting this image to be nice and crisp and high resolution. So I decided to go to the top of the line 
package from StreamYard so you guys can have something really, really nice, really uh, crystal clear. So if you can let me know in the comments a couple of things, uh, whether the image is clear and where you are watching this from. And then also if you can read my comments. So I would really appreciate if someone could do this. Okay, so now let's get started painting. So the very first thing I'm going to do is looking at my image here. Let me bring it really, actually, let me remove from the plastic so there's no glare. So here we go. So the very first thing that I want to do is paint that background and i'm going to paint the background wet on wet so i can have all those beautiful blends and when i look at my color chart here uh comparing the colors that i see i definitely see this violet and i see the green and i see a couple of different blues so i'm just going to try and mix them and here is darker so there is this you know shadow area down here and then here there's more light so what i'm going to do is wet the paper one area at the time because if i wet the whole thing by the time i go back up here it will start drying so i'm going to start by just wetting the top and I'm going to use one of those big brushes from the Royal Langnico Zen uh, watercolor brushes. I'm just wetting it, getting some water there, and uh, just adding plain water here. And I'm going to go right over those bubbles. Um, there is some, I don't know if you guys can see, there's some bubbles there that were printed and I'm okay with going right over. So spreading that, get the excess, make sure that the water is nice and well distributed. And I'm going to get uh, again, I'm going for the Zen watercolor brush just because I want this bigger one to start adding the colors wet on wet. So I'm going to wet my brush and I have here my... I'm sorry, I will try and figure out for tomorrow why my iPad is not capturing the camera because I would put the picture there for you guys to follow along but I'm just going to start with this very light blue and I'm not even going to mix it because there's so much water on the paper I'm just going to start adding and every time you see my hand disappearing I'm just getting more water and I'm going to add some of this green gold and letting actually i'm gonna go with the taylor blue and whenever i feel that is drying i'll just get a little more water and re-wet it I am also going to take this other Taylo. There's these different Taylos that are very beautiful. So I'm just going to add a combination of them. And if a little bit goes on the whale, it's no biggie because she's going to be dark. But you can always kind of pick up that excess with the brush. There we go. And... Uh, I want to get a little bit of this turquoisey color. You know, I'm going to use the image provided with the packets as my inspiration. It doesn't have to be exactly the same. And I don't, you know, you shouldn't really feel that you have to add. And it has to look exactly like the 
picture, you know, is there just as an inspiration. And honestly speaking, with all these beautiful colors, um, I almost definitely want to play with the different colors. I'm not too crazy about this. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to add some blue right over it. And you see how it's mixing with that yellow? I mean, that green gold, and it's making a little bit greener and not as yellowy. Okay, I'm going to add a little bit more color here. It's drying, so I'm going to add more water. So you see why it's important to, when you're working wet on wet like this, it's important to work in one section and then another section because the reality is um, if you try to wet the whole paper and work wet on wet by the time you've done here, wetting the whole paper and you go back up to start adding the paint, um, it's going to dry. So now I'm going to get, I do want to add some fun bubbles and that's what I'm going to do with my alcohol. So I'm just kind of tapping and you see how it forms all those fun bubbles. I'm not going to go too crazy. And uh, I made a decision to go with the alcohol. So I'm not going to do the salt as well because it's just going to be too much. And now here, I see that there is some puddles forming. So I'm just going to collect a little bit of that as well from here. And it's okay that it bled a little bit onto the veil because I know I can cover with the darker colors for her. So now um, I'm going to work on this area here and I'm going to be careful to go around the baby and not get paint, not get water, sorry, on her. This brush uh, is not the first time I, I tested before and it does shed a little bit. I'm hoping that it will stop with use, but it is a little bit disappointing that is shedding at all and i mean i would suggest if you are picking up those kits from michael's that you do get some extra brushes it doesn't have to be this one actually i'm not even sure if i would suggest this one because i in reality i had to get two different sets to get in the round brushes that i want one came with a uh, medium size. The other one came with a small and a large. And I wanted all three, so I ended up getting two sets. But And only because I wanted to try those brushes. Because if I hadn't seen them, I would have probably just gone with another set. Probably a synthetic set. Royal Lang Nickel has another set, and I'll try. I will post the link to that one that I saw that is really economical. It's $9.99 before the coupon, and it comes with five different sizes of round brushes. So, yeah, or maybe you already have watercolor brushes, then you know, don't worry. I, Heaven knows I didn't need to get those Zen brushes. Uh, <laughs> but I cannot resist buying more brushes. And I just wanted to try them out. Okay. So here I painted around the baby. And I'm going to continue adding color. So one space at one small section at a time so I don't have to keep rewetting the paper too much. I have to say I'm pleasantly surprised with the paper. It's taking those washes pretty well. 
So no complaints here. I am going to get some of this purple now. And I might glaze and to add a little bit more depth if I have to because I do want this bottom area here to be darker. So let's see how dark this will still be after I dry. I love how the color is just dispersing. So some of those colors are very, very beautifully blooming. And please, uh, I know that I asked this a few minutes ago, but maybe there was nobody there. I just, a few minutes ago, if there's anybody watching, <laughs> Is it at all? You know, doing those lives is like, I can't really tell. It's not like Zoom that I can see who's there. I can't tell who's there unless you guys comment. So if you could post a comment to let me know that you are there and you are watching, I would appreciate it so much. Um... And also, if you do that, please tell me where you're watching this because I am broadcasting simultaneously to different social media channels. So I would love to know where you guys are watching it from. Also, if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to ask. This demo here is really for you. So you can go ahead and either pick up this kit from your local Michaels or, you know, just apply the techniques to whatever it is that you might be painting. So I would appreciate if you guys ask me questions, you know, if you have any questions, Please don't be shy. Feel free to just add it in the chat. I'm keeping an eye on the chat. Um, I'm a one-woman one show, so <laughs> it's not like there is someone moderating, but I have my laptop right in front of me where I can see what I'm doing, and uh, I'll be able to answer any questions you might have. So before this whole thing dries, I am going to add a little bit of my alcohol. Okay. And now I have one last area to paint right here. So one thing, if you are using brushes, and they're shedding like mine. It's better to leave the hairs alone. And then when it dries, you can just brush it off. Then to try and pick it up while the paint is still wet. Because you could disturb um, the pigment. So I promise if you just leave it alone when you're done, when it's dry, you can just brush it off quite easily. So I do want to add this purple here. And I see that it's not really dioxazine purple because dioxazine purple is a really, really powerful color. It's a pigment that is very, very dark. So it's some combination of pigments that gives this dioxazine look. So what I'm going to do to make it darker, I am going to mix it with this stalo blue. And you see that when I do that, oops, accidentally pick up some burnt umber. I'm not happy with that. So I'm just collecting it quickly. You see, when people tell you that watercolors are difficult, they're not. They're, e they're not easy to correct mistakes. Don't believe it. It's not true. You can correct them, especially if the paint is too wet. It's quite easy. Okay, so 
Now I want to add more of this blue, this cerulean blue. Right here, under her tummy. And she has such a kind eyes. I love it. Her and her little baby. I'm just working carefully around her fins. And yeah, I think this area here is dark enough. I'm going to add just a little bit more. Okay. So a little bit more alcohol to continue with this um, bubbles effect. And now before... Or I can continue painting, I have to dry everything. So drying here, blow drying the, the painting is going to do two things. Obviously, it's going to dry it, but it's also going to flatten the paper. So that's the reason why instead of just allowing it to dry naturally, I do like to use the blow dryer because it flattens the paper quite a bit. It's not going to be completely flat like it was before, but it's going to be much better than it is now. So I am going to mute myself for a moment because I don't want you to hear the blow dryer. This is going to take a little bit of time, so <laughs> I figure if I'm like totally mute, you might think that there's some problem with the streaming, so oh my god, I love the way those bubbles are happening here, and it's just so easy to create it with the alcohol. I might use some salt on their bodies to create texture. And as I said, um, drying it like this, it's flattening the paper. So it's going to make my job much easier when I start painting the whales. So, and it, like I said, it doesn't have, because I had someone ask me last time, I was um, demonstrating if it needs to be a heat gun. Absolutely not. I just happen to have this heat gun here next to me. But blow dry will do. And washi tape is much cuter, right, than regular painter's tape. <laughs> so it's visually more appealing, but unfortunately, it's nowhere near as strong as painter's tape. So it's just coming apart, but it's okay. No biggie. Anyways, uh, we are at 33 minutes. I want to get this potty rolling because I want this to be super long. So I'm going to continue working on the whales. And so let's bring the picture back here and see if we can understand what's happening. And they are primarily a uh, dark purplish blue. There's some areas here where it's very, very textural. There's some darks here on the tips of their tail. And then you have all of those bumps that they have. And we're going to create that after we dry the first layer. So the first thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to mix this color. 
because we don't have a color that looks exactly like that. So we're going to need to mix from our colors. So I'm going to start with a little bit of violet and I'm going to a little bit of orange and see if I get just the right muted violet that she is. Uh, those wells are really tiny to mix large amounts, but I will attempt to do that in keeping with using just what came with the kit. I, I can't promise that <laughs> I'm going to be good and do this the entire time because I'm planning on doing this every day for the next month except for uh, Saturdays and Sunday, so every weekday, I should say. So I might get another one of my palettes to supplement this. So adding that, and I'm going to check this color. I'm also going to add a little bit of blue, and I'm going to add the Taylor blue. No, I think I'm going to add this cobalt blue because the Taylor blue might take over everything. So and I think that might give just a color. So let me try it out here on the back. And yep, that's exactly the color that I wanted. So I'm also going to, because this is going to be wet on wet. So I'm going to mix a uh, gray. So I'm getting some water just to fill this tiny little well and starting with a little bit of that, some burnt sienna, Actually, I should have gone just straight to the burnt sienna and this ultramarine might give me just, not ultramarine, cobalt blue, I, I wish they had a proper ultramarine don't understand why not because ultramarine it's a very cheap pigment um but hmm, too grayish i mean too greenish so let me get a little bit more of the sienna okay i will add a little bit of the ivory that's good and I'm going to add more water because I want this to be light. So lots and lots of water. And there we go. Okay. So I'm going to just quickly wet her body because I do want to work wet on wet here. Just so the color flows nicely. And here I have a chance to tidy up those edges that were a little bit messed up with the colors of the background. Anytime you are doing um, a wet on wet background like this, you might get some colors that accidentally run into the subject. There are ways to minimize that effect. And um, I actually have a PDF where I share my 10 tips to improve your watercolor paintings. And please feel free to sign up for my email and I'll be happy to share that with you. Also, when you sign up for my email, I promise I do not spam. I send probably one, two emails a month, no more than that. And there's always some fun things for you to download, some um, tips and techniques that I share. So I'm going to put my website in the chat so you can sign up for my newsletter 
and then you know when new things are happening um if i have any free classes or you know the free worksheets all of those fun things you get so ooh, nice adding this pretty pretty color huh. now that i'm looking it on her because there's one thing on the palette and on a regular paper that is just white and something else when you put next to the colors you already have i see that that was a little bit too purpley so i did add a little bit more of the blue but you know what i don't mind that i have i'm not even going to try to cover the whole thing because it is going to create some interesting contrast there. not contrast what's the word i'm looking for just interest you know i'm gonna go right over her eye because it's going to be really dark so it doesn't bother me that it's covering it i can still see you, you sorry my glasses just uh, hit my camera um i don't think the camera is picking up the eye because it's so 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 light but it's still there i can see it and i'm gonna go over with um black wow it's just creating like the because of the texture of the paper it almost looks like scales that is so cool uh, darkening some areas here and I do want to add the salt before she dries completely so I'm going to get the gray here Just adding a little bit of the black here, just like pure black, just to the end to get really dark. Rinse my brush, get a little bit of the purple and allow it to blend with that black. And I'm just actually quickly, while it's still wet, I am going to mix a little more color here because I feel that she's too light. So I do want to add, oh, much better now. We'll mix it with all that water things got a little bit too light so just going over and i'm kind of going back and forth between the blues and this dark so i have a good variation i'm not gonna lie the pigment is quite weak so you do need to lay in quite heavily there with almost pure pigment. I'm gonna leave some area here in her chummy without any color. So you will have to get quite a bit of plain. By that I mean solid pigment without diluting it too much because I want to make sure I don't lose her eye now. So I'm going to go around because now my color is much darker. And uh, I'm going to run bleed onto the lighter area of the tummy. 
I'm going to add this gray here as a base to her. Are they called fl flippers? I'm not sure. But I did decide to go with wet on dry here just so I can get this pigment a little bit stronger. But I don't want any of those hard edges, so I am going to soften them. Same thing with this one here. Have some very light area, so I'm adding that very, very light gray that I created earlier, and now I'm just adding blue and purple. I'm going to get a little bit of the sienna just to make it a little more dull. Okay. So she's dry in certain areas. I don't know how much the salt is going to take. But I don't want to add any more pigment to her. But I will add some salt here and there. And hopefully um, in those areas where it's still quite wet, the salt will create a little bit of texture. Okay, so let's quickly move on to the baby. I'm going to work in the same way, except that the baby is small. So I'm not going to really go wet on wet. I am going to use this gray, this very light gray as a base. And I'm just going to kind of mix this color directly here and create the hue by just brush mixing it. Like I said, this watercolors are best from what I notice now working with them if they're used very thickly. I do want to leave some area on her tummy to be lighter, so I'm going to lose this edge here so it just bleeds onto it. It's too much purple, so I'm going to get a little bit more of the blue and a little of the burnt sienna. And then just brush mix everything. I do want the tip to be a little bit lighter, so I'm just blotting it. Oops. And I'll let it bleed. I don't know if anybody has joined since I last asked someone, anyone. <laughs> <laughs> to add a comment in the chat so I know that I'm not here alone. So I'm going to ask again if there is anyone that has just joined. Please add a little comment in the box so I know that you're there. Oh, guys, the salt did take in some of these areas. And I'm really glad because I will have to blow dry it in a minute so i'm glad that it worked at least a little bit because once you blow dry it it stops working so i'm glad that i got some effect let me add a little more color to her here so she's a little bit darker I'm just also making her slightly wet again. A little bit of my gray. 
and I I still see a little bit of her eye, so not so bad. All right, let me add the salt to her quickly before it dries completely, and then the salt will not do anything. I will take a smaller brush now, just work some details here because I'm kind of lost some of the definition. And this one here does need to get a little bit darker, a little more blue. Just mixing a little bit more color here. Just to make this darker because this would definitely be in shadow because it's right beneath her little body and little tummy. Uh, I'm going to do the same thing here. And uh, a little bit here on the tip of her tail. Soften the edges. Um, define this area here a little bit more. And um, I do want to give it a, a just a couple of seconds before I blow dry, just so the salt can work a little bit more. But I think that with this very small brush and a little bit of just plain black, I can work on the eye. So I can still see, and here is the eye, oops. <laughs> and then there is those lines so I am using this smaller brush. You know what? This might be to my benefit that those lines are, that this is a little bit wet just like barely damp because those lines here, some of them I just get a little bit fuzzy, which is good. I'm just adding some of those lines on her tummy with plain black and I did go for one of my smaller brushes. It's probably not small enough, but I'm not going to reach for anything else. I'm going to work with what I have. And probably for tomorrow's demo, I'll show you guys some other options if you want to get. And she does have some of those nubs, so I'm just going to add. A few here and there. I just, I completely lost them. I can no longer see them. Uh, so I'm just kind of, you know, making it up. And it's really hard to see because the image is so small. There's some lines here as well that are lost. Um, I'm gonna do something here. Um, I'm going to try to do the same with the baby. I see and it's kind of disturbing the salt a little bit, but like I said, I don't want to be here forever. I think the little eye, I lost the eye, but I think it's here. 
totally lost the eye, you guys. I have no idea. I think it's here. Um, she does have a few lines here and there in her tummy. Uh, some here. Darkening here. Adding some lines to her tail. To her flippers. If they're called flippers, if they're not, my apologies. Um, but yeah, I think that's it. So now I will stop the salt. It's worked its way. So I'm going to blow dry quickly so I can add any less details that I need to make sure that the paper is absolutely dry. And, you know, as soon as you blow dry it, the salt is going to stop uh, reacting. But it reacts enough. And I love, 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 love the texture that I was able to create with it. And, uh, yeah, I'm happy. So now it's time to remove the washi tape I did have a little bit of bleeding and I'm not surprised because I chose cute over practical and I know that <laughs> the wash tape the washi tape is not going to be as strong and protecting protective of the paper as blue painter's tape, but it's okay. Didn't exactly get uh, the nicest border because of it. Oddly enough, it didn't protect the paper very well, but it seems to be really <laughs> sticking to my hands. Hi. Okay. Thanks, washi tape. It's like washi tape one jade zero. Okay. Got it. Got it all out. And here it is. Our little project. I think I will add just a little bit of more definition to her little eye because I can't see it really well. Just some other lines here. Yeah, yeah. Don't, don't not going to fickle. But here it is. Our little whale is ready. And this was Michael's watercolor painting kit, the Sea Life. So tomorrow, I haven't completely decided which one yet I will paint. I will post, um, when I post in the morning what I'm going to paint, I will let you know which one it is. And I just put it in the comments, the link if you want to purchase the kit again i'm not an affiliate i'm not getting a commission or anything it's just a product that i'm truly enjoying and uh i hope you guys enjoy it as well so thank you so much and i'll see you back tomorrow bye guys